Telepathic was this month's Game Crafter Spotlight game, and it's another in the ilk of games where you can't actually communicate with your team. But does this one stand the test of time, along with some of the other classics in the genre? Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review and a special Game Crafter Spotlight review. Where every single month I focus on one specific Game Crafter game. I do a series of videos on that game culminating in a review. And right here I'm review Telepathic. This is for two plus players. Take you 15 minutes to play and it's for ages 12 plus. And in Telepathic, this is a game in which you are going to have a grid of shapes set out. These great shapes are going to be different shapes and different colors. Now... In the game, if you're playing the two-player version of the game, each player is going to have one win condition and one loss condition. One person will be the shape person, and one person will be a color condition. So essentially, they'll have three colors in a row that they need to put on the grid and they'll win the game, but if they get three colors in a row on the grid, then they automatically lose the game. And you take turns doing actions, trying to get the grid to look perfect, and then trying to read your teammate's mind to hopefully figure out when you need to end the game. If you want to see exactly how it's played, I got a gameplay video right up there. This is more of the review. I'm going to be focusing on my thoughts on the game. Now, I played this three times, twice at two players, and then once trying out the three-player version of the game, the director mode, which that one is really stinking hard. <laughs> but let's get into my thoughts on the game. First, uh, so we're going to start on the con side. This is not going to be a game for everybody. If you don't like the mind, if you don't like the game, if you don't like Hanabi, if you don't like games of this ilk where there's limited communication cooperative style games, this one is definitely not going to be for you because that is the core of the game. And also one thing I want to mention is I did not get a chance to try out the four partners game mode or the four players on opposing team mode, which are just uh, a couple of the extra variants in the game. So there's even more legs with this game that I did want to mention right there. Continuing on with the con side, um, you, you know, honestly, you just got to know your game group. You, that's that's really it. If you don't like the style game, it's not going to be for you. Also, it is going to be samey from time to time. Now, you can mix things up by having different actions in there, and there's some different things you can do to make it a little bit more difficult. But at the end of the day, most games are going to be very samey as you're just rearranging shapes and colors and quietly doing that. And that's not going to be for everybody. Moving on to the pros... As long as you understand that this is that style of game, I think it does it really well, and I enjoy this game, and I think I'm going to keep this game in my collection, much like I have The Mind, much like I have The Game, much like I have Hanabi. I enjoy these style games, and I enjoy this game. Do I think it's better than those games? That's a tough one. Hanabi? No. Quite personally, I mean, Hanabi won the spiel. I think it's fantastic. I love Hanabi. The Mind? Um... The mind is interesting, and the reason why I say the mind in the game, I think this is interesting, and why I might, I like those games better, I think I might recommend this one potentially to people a little bit more, is because it does have these different ways to play the game. For instance, the director mode has one person pretty much calling all the shots and saying, oh, here's what you need to do, and they're giving the actions out, and it's so difficult, at least it was for me. Uh, but enjoyable nonetheless, and it adds legs to the game because there's different ways to play the game. And at the end of the day, I think most people are going to enjoy playing this, the game. I played this with one, two, three other people, grand total, all three of the people, to a certain extent, enjoyed the game. It's not my wife's style of game, and she didn't really want to play again. But I wasn't surprised by that because she doesn't like the limited communication style games because, you know, they're just not for everybody. But at the end of the game... Day. Telepathic was fun. I enjoy it. I love trying to figure out what my opponent did. And then, like, uh, it, it's fun because it's fun because you're really paying attention to what someone else is doing. And then it gets to your turn. And you're like, oh, I need to do this one thing. And the thing is, you might be done. You might be ready. And so you might be trying to help out your teammate by making a certain move that you think is going to help them. But in actuality, you're actually hurting them. And it can lead to some interesting and fun scenarios. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. It does not stay its welcome. It has relatively uh, simple rules. I mean, I didn't have any issues with the rules. And at the end of the day, I think Telepathic's a very good game. I'm going to give this one a 7.7. I don't think it's quite great. But I still think it's very good. And I think if you like this style of games, this is definitely one you might want to put on your radar. Check out the Game Crafter link down below. Also, if you ever want to create a game of your own, be sure to check out the Game Crafter. They do amazing prototypes. I made mine. 
uh, 10 years ago, 8, 9, 10 years ago, and they've only advanced since then with new technology, new manufacturing processes. I just saw this crazy miniature 3D printed door they did with like hinges and it just did insane stuff. Go check them out. But that's telepathic. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Bye bye.